All right, welcome in to Harmonious at Lunch. It's 3 p.m. on the East Coast, so not really our lunch time, but maybe some of those of you in California are eating lunch. I'm chatting here today with Bob Thompson. Bob has a really, really cool backstory I want to dive into, but he's transitioning in his career from a realtor to a speaker, and I want to dissect what that means in the world of business at What If. We're all about the harmonious architecture and just unveiling the way businesses should operate and we're going to dive into that a little bit with Bob today. So, Bob, welcome to Harmonious at Lunch. Good to have you here. Welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. So you have a really interesting, unique, and semi-unfortunate backstory. So tell me a little bit about what happened uh, just a few years ago and what kind of prompted this change in your life. Well, the, I mean, it's twofold. In 2007, I transitioned from a chemist to a full-time real estate agent. So that was a major move and, you know, did well and kind of took off from there. And in my market, I'm, I, I do quite well. I'm quite happy about that. 2018, I had my first heart attack in May. And then I had my second heart attack in October of 2018. And at that point, they basically said, we're done, we're going in. And they went in and did what was supposed to be a double bypass, became a quadruple bypass. And after that, you know, I, I had quite honestly, if you don't, you know, in my line of work, if you don't work, you don't get paid. And I at one point had basically lost everything in the span of a week and a half. I got my bank account taken. I got my credit card canceled and I got my car repoed. Now, I was able to get the car back and, and eventually you know, reached out to some folks and worked myself back up to where I needed to be. But it kind of made me realize that, that I, I kind of wanted to reach out and and help out. And I had been asked to do it before and quite honestly had been kind of selfish about it and was like, I don't want to deal with teaching a bunch of people how to, you know, sell real estate. But I started doing that in 2019. And I, even though I left that company very quickly, um, I found that I absolutely love doing it. And it just kind of snowballed from there into other avenues and and job change and, and dealing with, you know, significant health issues and stuff like that. So I'm, uh, I'm enjoying it and it seems to be going well. That's awesome. Right, tell me about the first switch. I, I wasn't aware of the chemist to realtor. What, what prompted that change? Honestly, in about 2004, I was going, going to get, go back to school. I was a chemist at that point. It had been for quite a while. I'm literally sitting in freshman chemistry with my own lab coat, with my name on it, all my own supplies. And I started going, like I said, I was going back to school for environmental protection and absolutely was miserable. Just after about two weeks of school, I was like, I'm done. This is not what I want to do. Now, remember, I got into the lab without a degree, which was an anomaly in the first place. I was smart enough to do the work, but I didn't have the degree and was going to go back for it and just absolutely hated it. 12 hour shifts, you know, 15 bosses, the whole nine yards. And I put a three-year plan together to switch over to real estate. And luckily, I got it done in two years. And probably one of my proudest moments is I walked out of that lab in 2007 and never looked back. That's great. I, most people don't. They have the plan, and it's always a plan, and it's on the shelf. Very cool that you actually put that into action. Um, so and you, I'm 35 you go for years old when I did that plan, and, and I did it in, in 2007 in the middle of the recession when basically everybody told me I was insane for doing it, but I got lucky. I found something I was good at and I doubled my income in 2008 and quite honestly, just never looked back. That's amazing. So you go from, you have a job to being a realtor, which I would argue is, is owning your own business, if, regardless of, of how you, how your structure works in the company. I, I think a realtor, you have to understand all the different elements of business to be a successful realtor. You've done that for a long time. Obviously you've had success. Was there in the beginning, was there any of that maybe remorse for going from job security to business owner that we usually hear about? No remorse whatsoever, because again, we plan, my ex-wife and I planned it and I knew this is what I needed to do. And I, at the time, the thought process was, okay, well, I'm making 45 grand a year as a chemist and I've got good medical. If we pay our bills down, then at worst case, if I make less money, it's not going to hurt us. So we paid both the car payment. You know, at the time we were, you know, dual car payment, the whole nine yards, the kids were gone. So it just made sense to let's get everything paid off. 
so no, I, I really, you know, I probably had some, some quieter, poor moments at the end of 2007 when, but you know, I, I have no regrets and I never really looked back and it was, I, I don't think I ever was regretful about it. It was the right decision. And besides I was miserable. So what was, what's the point? I mean, I'm not going to go anywhere at, at working in the, in the lab long term. I'm going to stay in the same spot. And yes, I could have stayed there and spent another 15 years spinning my wheels, but I wasn't happy. I wasn't a great employee. That just didn't make any good sense. So I've never had any remorse. Quite honestly, I don't think I've had any regrets over much of anything other than probably should have quit smoking years ago and I wouldn't have had the heart attack. <laughs> other than that, that's probably about it overall. Lessons learned, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. So that's good. So you go into this new career, you have the fire in you, which is fantastic. Obviously, that propelled you for such a long time. So we fast forward to two heart attacks in a year and bypass surgery. What are, what are your thoughts going through your head, you know, at post surgery? Now you're looking at a career tra transition. What do you what are you thinking is possible for you at, at that portion of your career? I mean, I think at that point, it becomes a situation to where, OK, well, I've survived this and I felt good about going into the surgery and I was prepared to do the rehab afterwards. And I did that. But it kind of it's kind of one of them things. OK, motivational speaking is something that I'd always I had kept on the back burner probably the last three or four or five years before the heart attacks. And a lot of times, you know, as well as I do, and I hate to talk bad about it, but if you try to get into it and look at it online, then there's a thousand different courses that you can pay a thousand different millions of dollars and do this and do that. And it's not something that I wanted to do. And I had just kind of put it off and put it off. So you kind of get to that point where you're just like, well, what difference does it make if I fail? You're not going to, I'm not going to be on this earth forever and I might as well enjoy myself. And I think if one thing I've learned, even from just doing the podcast and the other stuff that I do, you know, there's about 10 or 15 people in this entire world whose opinion I really care about and everybody else like me or don't like me. I don't really care. I mean, you know, I've almost died repeatedly. So at this point, whatever, you know, <laughs> I, I, again, I, I always kind of had that attitude with real estate anyway, where I was the anti real estate agent. And that's worked for me because I'm honest and I'm going to tell you the truth. So I've just kind of all I'm doing is taking my same kiss my ass attitude and moved it over to another area, quite honestly. I love, yeah, when you have the filter to bounce things off of, well, I almost died, so should I care what people think? It's, <laughs> yeah, it becomes it, pretty clear, right? A real quick. Yeah, yeah, the trolls on the internet don't mean so much when, when no. you're laying on that table. That's awesome. I want to lean in there for a second. So you were you were the anti-real estate agent. Um, now you, are you going for the, you know, the anti-motivational speaker? Are you taking on the, the negatives of the industry? I am taking on that. I think you need to be honest and tell people the truth and kind of leave it unfiltered. Like I, I talk about the stuff, the mistakes that I've made. And I think there's a lot to learn from that. And I also, you know, we have a tendency from what I can see, with the exception of a few people where they're trying to touch every single area of life and not every, and you can't touch every single area of life and it doesn't work that way. So I think it's important to be a little bit more focused. I like you know, my, my two main, my main areas are talking to young people about it, quite honestly. And I hate to sound like a old granddad, but get off the phone and talk to people. And I'll give you an example of that. I'll try to keep it short. I got a buddy of mine that runs Miami web fest and I went down there with him in 2021 and helped him, you know, we had a bunch of interns down there and this is the cream of the crop of Miami, Florida and TV. So for an intern, this is a great opportunity. You get to meet all these people. And we made it a point, hey, talk to everybody. Uh, DJ EFN was there with the Drink Champs podcast guys. And we have a, a, a meet and greet thing beforehand on a Thursday night. And five or six of the interns are sitting and staring at their phone all night and talking to each other. And I'm like, guys, why are you even here? You have an opportunity to meet the people that you need to meet within your industry your phone's not going to get you in the door, you know? So I focus on that. I focus on imposter syndrome because I think it's a major issue and it's something that I've always struggled with. And even with my success in real estate, I still struggle with it. There's not a month goes by where I feel like, okay, well, the phone's never going to ring again. Nobody loves me anymore. And I got to go get a job at Walmart. It's a weird thing to feel, 
but I think it's true. And I think it's important to say so. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. I want to ask you a couple questions about, especially imposter syndrome, because I think that's huge with business owners and entrepreneurs. Um, but before we dive into that, I do want to give you a chance to share. I know you have a new course coming out. Put the link on the screen here to Bob's website, which is going to be finished up in the next couple of days. But tell me a little bit about this course and then we'll we'll dive back in. OK, so we'll do the shameless plug. Um, <laughs> That's what we're all about here. We want to build you up. Uh, want more, take more. It's a it's a course. It's a book. It's a video. It's a it's a combination. We kind of went with all three things in one shot. I do better on video or live than I do on the printed paper. So my editor has to kind of change my stuff around because quite honestly my grammar is garbage and i can get a little wordy so she'll go in and kind of and and clean that up and i felt like with the video course you get you're getting a little bit more of me in a uh, hundred percent honesty where it's just me and the camera and that's the end of it so essentially like i said it's called want more take more it'll be out soon and we've got some other things that we're working on again we're getting ready to push back into I've done some local college speaking, spe yeah, college speaking, and I would like to do some more of that. So working on that too. So that's the shameless plug. That's great. No, I, I appreciate you sharing. What are you hoping people is like the the foundational takeaway from that course? I think it's a combination of what worked for me, which is self checks and persistent, you know, progress. Which is take your time, make you know, make little goals. You don't need they don't need to be anybody else's goals, but yours. So take the steps that you need to do. You can create them yourself. Be honest with how you're doing financially, personally, and professionally, and grow from that point. And the other big thing that I push, and I hate to say it, but it's training in the dark. And that's essentially just put your head down and keep your mouth shut because there's so much negative space out there. And I dealt with that even as far back when I worked at the grocery store and left the grocery store to go to the chemical plant, I had people at the grocery store that were just like, well, this is the best job you're ever going to have. You're never going to make it, blah, blah, blah. We hear so much of that. So it's important to find the people that will support you, even if they're online. And quite honestly, again, keep your mouth shut until you're ready to come out and say, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I got going on now. And to me, that's the best way to do it. And I wish I had done more of that when I started making my transitions, you know, from, from even from the grocery store to the chemist and leaving the chemical plant, I still had a lot of negative space and a lot of negative people that are just like, well, now you're just going to rely on yourself for a paycheck and you're making a mistake and you're going to fail. And you're going to be again, working at Walmart in six months. So that's really what I'm focused on. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure no entrepreneur has ever heard that from friends and family. Right. So okay. <laughs> that's yeah, and I get it. I mean, there's a bias there. And let's be honest, there's always going to be people that have a certain perception of you, whether it's the family member you see twice a year that remembers you as the idiot, you know, 15 year old getting in trouble in school or whatever. So, again, I think you've just got to take that space. And the, to me, the best way to eliminate that problem or not spend your emotional capital is just to don't tell anybody until you're ready to bust out and then do go and do your thing. I mean, Focus on the people that are going to support you and be honest with you, of course, but, you know, are going to do that and not just be negative because they either A, can't make that same transition or B, don't want to. Yeah, that's fantastic advice. And how does how do you see that tying into imposter syndrome? Because for me, what I imposter syndrome is, is twofold. It's internal, but it's also external from all these naysayers and people trying to tear down your dreams. So what are what are some actionable tips, whether it's from your course or from when you speak? that as entrepreneurs, we can take to fight imposter syndrome and get past these naysayers? Well, I, I think that's part of it right there. Again, it's just, you know, keeping your mouth shut until you're close to the point where you're ready to let everybody know and you've gotten to a certain level of, of what you're trying to accomplish. The other thing with imposter syndrome is I think that you have to acknowledge it. And again, you have like what happens with me is literally there'll be at least a day or two every month where things get quiet and they get quiet for okay, everything's ready to close. We've got appointments lined up, but they're not here yet. So there's really nothing to do but a day or two of busy work. And I literally will feel like, okay, well, the phone is not going to ring. Nobody's going to ever call me again for real estate or anything. But I have to, when that happens, I have to go back over my list and go, okay, well, clearly if I've been successful for 15 plus years, 
then I'm being a little silly and I need to, again, you know, shut my mouth and focus on the fact that I have done what I needed to do. And I do know that this phone is going to ring and accept that. So sometimes it's as simple as going back over your successes. And I'm weird. I'll even go back over and listen to one of my old podcasts if I'm, you know, not having a good health day or if I'm feeling like the, you know, that again, the world is going to cave in and nobody's going to call me. I'll stupidly enough, we'll sit down and listen to my own advice and be like, oh yeah, dummy. You know? <laughs> Maybe you should follow that or put on some Les Brown because I'm a big fan of Les Brown and his, you know, for whatever reason, his words always resonated with me. So it could be just as simple, as simple as that to kind of get back on track. Yeah, I love that. And actually, I just heard from a mentor of mine. Uh, maybe you've heard this statement too. It's that imposters don't have imposter syndrome. So if you're feeling that way, it's pretty likely that you're not an imposter. That's yeah. self-inflicted. And I, I love having, like you said, Les Brown. I love having a mentor or someone you can look at for that inspiration to pull you forward. Someone who's been there, who you're kind of chasing their footsteps, if you will. Um, that's that's really great. And then you want to be that for other people which is fantastic. Yeah. Ultimately that, that would be the long-term goal. You know, if it happens, it happens. And again, like you and I talked before we went on camera, if it doesn't happen, then that's fine too. And even if somebody gets just, you know, I've had phone calls from, you know, various people or Facebook messages that be like, you know, Hey, I, you know, great tip you gave me the other day. I just want to let you know, I appreciate it. And that's all I can ask for at the end of the day. If somebody gets one nugget out of something that I screwed up earlier, then I'm happy with that. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. Love learning from other people's failures. Um, I know I personally don't even call them failures. I, I W's and L's, right? Wins and learns. That's that's just what it is. So tell me before I let you go, we got a couple of minutes here. Um, what is if you could help shortcut somebody's career, whether they're an entrepreneur, a realtor, um, a business owner, what's what was like the biggest mistake and learning lesson from your career that you would love to just shortcut for somebody else? The biggest thing that I learned early 2008, I had joined a new real estate team and I, I had a property that I could not sell. And my broker, who's also the team leader at the time, I mean, he's everything. It's his name on the on the board and everything. And we're arguing back and forth over this property. And he looks at me and goes, how many houses have you sold? And I started stuttering and fluttering because I hadn't accomplished a whole lot. And he was like, why are you arguing with me? He's like, I am the expert. My name is on the door. Why are you going to argue with me? And it's like the light went on. And so I've remembered that ever since that, you know, shut your mouth and listen to people that know better. Now, granted, it's good to get a second opinion, but I'm not going to argue with my mechanic about what's wrong with my car. I may go find another mechanic and ask him and we all do it. I mean, we'll sit on the couch on Sundays and complain how badly the coach is coaching when let's be honest, none of us know any better than the coach does. I mean, I didn't play high school football and have don't have that much athletic ability anyway. So it's silly for me to sit there and be like, well, you know, they should have put in number 72 and he would have done this and done that. So we all do it, but it's something I've taken with me that you know, if somebody is the expert, I'm going to shut my mouth and listen to them. And then once I get to that point, then I'll stick my nose in and say something. But otherwise, you can't be the best at everything. I'm sorry. It just doesn't work that way. I hear that. That's great advice. Now, um, Bob, I want to know, again, I'll put it on the screen one last time, what Bob thinks.com, your new website coming out where we can find the course, learn more about you. Uh, where can people contact you or follow you on social media just to follow your journey and learn, learn more from you. The best place would be what Bob thinks.com on, or what Bob thinks on Facebook also. And you can find me on there and I'm old fashioned. So as far as I'm concerned, once you find me, you can send me a message. You can call me my, all my information is there. I've never been I'm one of those weird people that still answers the phone. Maybe because I'm 51, I still do. I don't know. But by all means, reach out, say hello. If you have a question, I'm always happy to answer it. And that's always, you know, the best place. You can reach me on LinkedIn. Same thing. You know how that goes. That's awesome. Well, thank you for coming, Bob. Drop your takeaways in the comments. I want to hear them, whether you're watching this live or the replay. I want to know what you think, what you got from this episode. This was awesome to talk to Bob. Um, go ahead, reach out to him, Bob. I'm excited to follow your journey and follow along and see how many people you're able to impact through your message. So thanks for coming along to harmonious at lunch, chatting with us a little bit. Um, and we'll see you tomorrow on the next episode. Awesome. I'm here. If you need